Coming up this week on the second episode of Star Sports TV, we're going to call it Enable, yay or nay in the King George. That's going to be with Bill Esdale. We're going to have football as well. The last week of the Premier League season, we're going to talk football with Adam Russell. Ryan Sidebottom is on to talk about the third test and the cricket. Uh, we're going to have William Kajani on what's hot and what's not on the political front. We're going to have Blue Horseshoe as well uh, talking golf. And we're going to hit the tweet spot. We've an awful lot to get through. Let's talk racing. Bill Esdale is in the house. Bill, good morning to you. Morning, Johnny. Uh, Enable, four to six. I was like kind of humming and hawing, will she beat Magical? And now it turns out she probably isn't going to be running against Magical. And this is the problem. We have the Talisals Gold Cup and the King George the same weekend. And this is going to make it easier for Enable. And surely four to six is actually value. Could be. I mean, my, my only problem with Enable is I think she's lost that kind of air of invincibility. She um, has lost her last few races. Yeah, she's lost the air, but I don't think the bookmakers are reflecting that. So she's still priced up like, you know, that kind of 8-13 to 13 shot that is invincible. Um, it looks like you say that Magical won't go here and Japan will. It's not a great betting race, but if I had to have a bet, I'd probably take a chance on Japan. Um, if you can get kind of 4-1 to one about Japan, I thought that would be a fair bet. I think he's been brought he's to the ball. actually 9-2 to two at the moment as well. 9-2. Oh, well, that's great. Yeah. I mean, he, he's been brought to the ball. I thought he... The market told you he wasn't ready for Royal Ascot, and the market told you he probably wasn't ready for the Coral Eclipse. I'd imagine this has been his target if they're, if they're confident enough to leave Magical behind. And I think Japan could actually shake a navel up. Don't forget our pips at the post-promotion. Uh, if you're beating a neck or less, up to 100 quid free bet back uh, in the big races and the televised races. And um, we've got Goodwood to talk about as well. In terms of the Tadasol's uh, Gold Cup, I imagine, Bill, this is going to be Magical's to lose in the sense that Aidan O'Brien has pretty much alluded that she's likely going to run there. She was brilliant on her reappearance, and I imagine she does win this. Yeah, I mean, it's boring, but very obvious. You look down the list, most of the runners are from Ballydoyle Doyle anyway. But, I mean, magical. I thought, I was really interested in her if she went to Ascot, because I think she could have genuinely beaten an able. But mm. she, she looks to be improving with age. I mean, she was brilliant at Ascot at the end of last season and looked really, really good again um, on her reappearance. But, I mean, this should be a walk in, in the park for her. I meant, meant to say to you that we're going to be doing another Zoom room at the end of the week on, on, on Friday night. Delightful. With Sylvester D'Souza. Um, and that should be good looking at the Ascot card. Just a couple of other, just before we move on to next week's stuff, just a couple of other horses to look out for at the early stages, um, just at, at Ascot. Um, there's a horse in the three o'clock, the, the, the Nifty 50 handicap. Look out for one of the outsiders there. Great ambassador of Rafe Beckett's caught my eye at Ascot. I think around 10 to 1. That could run really well. Um, the two favourites in the uh, Moe Chandon Challenge uh, Heritage Handicap have been kind of well found in the market. There's been loads of money um, for Ebury, um, who's around an eight to one shot, and for Blue Mist, who was unlucky at Ascot. Um, but look out for Spanish City. I think there's 20 to one uh, for Roger Varian's horse, uh, second in this race a few years ago. But they've got a good claimer booked, and I thought. Spanish City would run well. But like I said, more, more about that on Friday night. Bill, I'm going to ask you for one word. Enable yay or nay? Um, I'm going to go nay. So to paraphrase Krusty the Clown, now for my favourite part of the show. Not talk to the audience, talk to the trader. And Flynn Goward is in the house. Flynn, you might be back racing on Saturday week. Little rumour going around. Yeah, fingers crossed. They're thinking about doing a pilot of Goodwood where they allow 5,000 members in. Uh, and we, we bet six on the rail there. So, fingers crossed that we get in and we'll be able to experience going back racing again since Cheltenham in March. This genuinely is my favourite part of the show. What have you been laying? What's been winning? What's been losing? Uh, well, the, the big race last week was the Irish Oaks and we laid Ennis Diamond. Got the, got got the, the name, name right, right there, Johnny, liking, liking it? Uh, yeah, we, we laid um, Ennis Diamond to lose almost 500 grand last week. So, wow. huge, huge result for us there. Got to kick on a horse like that. You don't have to run at Epsom. I know it was it was a funny old run, wasn't it? It was like miles mm. out the back, and it was a real peculiar run. Just didn't run a race whatsoever. Laid the pepper as well. Yeah, we did lay cocaine co co and pepper. So the JL Lions, uh, even so, going on to him was a fantastic result for us there. Um, we've really struggled in, in uh, on the football in, in the last week, though. Even, even though we did well on the racing, uh, we laid West Ham at eleven to eight versus Watford earlier in the week, and that was to lose a huge sum. Uh, then, then we laid Man United against Chelsea, so we thought we got out on it there in the FA Cup semi final. But then last night we laid Villa heavily at 21 to 10 and that was to lose almost half a million pounds as well. So although we did well in the racing last week, we really struggled on the football front. So what are you wary of then coming forward this weekend? So obviously the big race this week is the King George and you've got a neighbour in there at four to six versus the Cornwall Battalion. What I think is really interesting though about this week is 
or a, a lot of the Cornwall horses are kind of might be engaged at the Curra in the, in the Tassel mm. Gold Cup. Um, so we've actually seen a bit of money for Sovereign at 20 to 1. That's now 12. Um, so before the entries came out, we had people inquiring about Sovereign. So it'd be interesting to see if, if your magicals in Japan's go to the Curra and then Sovereign comes over here to run at Ascot. Um, and obviously we've seen money for Naval. That, uh, that was about to even money, 10 to 11, now 4 to 6 poke. In like Flynn, out like Flynn. Thanks, Johnny. Every week, Hit the Tweet Spot gives you a chance to win a free pony bet that's 25 quid. All you have to do is reply to a Star Sports tweet or indeed mention Star Sports in a tweet. And every weekend, as we say, it's a free pony bet. And this week's tweet, it only involves a set of eyes from Matt in relation to our Saracens Premiership Special. What more do you need? So Adam Russell is here to talk football. A ridiculous Premier League season is just coming to its conclusion. Adam, what are we looking at for the final game of the season? Yeah, thanks for having me, Johnny. Like you say, um, a bit of an unusual Premier League season and, and we're finally at the final day, um, slightly later than planned. But the Premier League should really be congratulated for managing to get the season finished before, before the start of August. Yeah, you're looking for a bit of a goal fest the last game of the season, aren't you? So a lot of teams with nothing to play for. Yeah, there's normally a bit of a goal fest on the last day. I think we had 36 goals on the last day last year, um, including an eight-goal thriller at Sellers Park as Palace beat Bournemouth 5-3. Um, in, in four of the last five seasons, the, the last game of the season has produced more goals than the whole season average. Um, so we normally expect some goals. I think um, Manchester City obviously swept aside Watford last night and you'd expect them to do something similar to Norwich. Uh, they're 1-3 for over 2.5 goals at the minute. And my selection for over 2.5 goals would be Southampton and Sheffield United. Neither have really got anything left to play for. Both would want to finish their seasons off in style after, after quite good campaigns. So I think we could see quite an open game at St Mary's. Top man Adam and Michael Obafemi in crack and form, the Irish striker for Southampton. Just remember, save by the 90s, if you place a £10 bet or more on any selected game, you get a £5 free bet if there's a goal scorer uh, in the 90th minute or thereafter. It's time for cricket. Now, Ryan Sidebottom pretty much called this last week. He said to get on England in the test. Now, am I summing this up properly? Archer is back. Stokes is the best ever. And basically, Stuart Broad hasn't gone away, you know. No, I mean, Stokes is absolutely stunning again, isn't he? I mean, second test showed what he's capable of and what he's done, you know, the last 18 months and how good a player he is. Great to see Stuart Broad back. It was called for by many people from the first innings, from the first test. Mm. And, you know, he showed why he's such a good bowler and he's got all those wickets. Will Joffrey Archer come back into the side? I'm not quite sure. These you know, are will, mad times. Yeah, and also England, will you change a winning team? Yeah. Of course, there's, look, there's back-to-back test matches. What, there's six test matches with Pakistan all in a row, which obviously you're going to rest players because you can't, you know, the bowlers can't play every game. But I don't think they'll change a winning team now. Um, I think they'll stick to the team they've got. Joffrey Archer hasn't actually bowled that well. Um, apart from the second innings at Hampshire, where he got his tail up a little bit. But for me, um, I think they'll stick with the same team. And West Indies you know, may have one or two changes. Shy Hope hasn't scored any runs in, in quite some time. So will he uh, miss out for someone else? 11 o'clock Friday at Old Trafford. Uh, Stokes 5-1 to one to be man of the match. What are you liking in the markets? Well, I've gone for Jason Holder, who uh, leads West Indies very, very well. He's a special um, he's 30 plus runs and three wickets in the first innings at 10 to 1, which I think is a great bet. And then I've gone for, I've stuck with Ollie Pope again uh, to be man of the match, uh, 14 to 1, which again is a very good bet. Um, he's, he's lacked a few runs of, of late, but he's a fine, fine player in that middle order. And Old Trafford, the wicket should suit him. So I've gone for those two picks. But Ben Stokes is obviously a great bet as well. Two double figure selections from Ryan. Top man. G'day golf fans, well that was B.R. Utel last week at the Memorial, wasn't it? It was carnage. I thought some golfers were going to burst into tears like Bryson DeChambeau getting a 10, which just shows that it can happen to the best of us. Well, well done to John Rahm uh, in winning the Memorial. He also became the number one golfer in the world, and that's well deserved. He's been playing very well for the last couple of years. Uh, we did pretty well too. Blue Horseshoe, we picked Matt Wallace at the beginning of the tournament at 150 to 1, and he placed. 
and Jason Day at 60 to 1 and he placed. So very happy with that. This week we're off to the 3M Open in Minnesota and Blue Horseshoe uh, likes a few. Uh, in one particular we like Sam Burns at 40 to 1. Uh, had him the other week uh, and he was going very well at 175 to 1 before dropping his final round. But I think he'll do well this week. To see who else we like, check out the Star Sports blog below. Good luck. Let's get serious. Let's talk politics with William Kajani. So Trump says he's doing his briefings again, and all of a sudden Biden hardens from age 13 into 4 to 7. It all makes sense. Yeah, all makes perfect sense, just like everything in America. Um, we're finding, I think, that the markets are still moving in various directions, but things have stalled a bit now. And what you have is a situation where Biden is the front runner, making the running, um, probably, I think, about short enough, but there are some people who now think that Trump is valued. We are very far out from polling day. 8 to 15, the winning party is the Democrats. What's going on on the UK front? Uh, on the UK front, a really interesting thing has been where Parliament will move to. Um, so last week, Boris Johnson suggested that the Palace of Westminster should be moved to York whilst the Commons had to go to repairs. We went out with the market, an exclusive market. We were free to one York. We still are. Interesting tidbit in the time just the Esther Webber reporting that Richmond House is under consideration for MPs to move to. Richmond House is the fourth to one third favourite. There are a load of London venues, so we go five to two on that when MPs move, it's within London. That, that's quite mad, but is it your I kid you not for the week? My I kid you not for the week is a special on our beloved favourite president, I'm joking of course, Donald Trump, who in a sit down with Chris Wallace of Fox on Sunday said he wouldn't necessarily um, accept the results of the election if he lost. We are four to one that Trump refuses to accept the results of the election and also doesn't go to the inauguration if Joe Biden wins. I'd expect to see some pressure on that price too. The guy is a crybaby, get on. Hannah Baycroft, how are you? I'm very good, how are you? I'm not too bad. You've done really well in lockdown. You've actually come up with lockdown videos. Tell us about that. Yes, so these are my lockdown interviews. So I really wanted to use my time wisely throughout lockdown, as of course, like all of us, we had no idea when it was going to end. Mm. So I wanted to build a portfolio. So I contacted Mick Fitzgerald and he kindly said he'd love to get involved um, and be my first person to interview. So that's how it started. And I just wanted to create this channel for racing, really. And who have you interviewed since Mick then? So after Mick, I then interviewed John Frankham, then Peter Scudmore, and then Mike Hathmo. So four videos so far. That's actually some top quality content. And you'll find, I guess, in race as well, that people are quite approachable and they will kind of help you out as well, especially if you're a bit of a newbie. Exactly. Mick was amazing. Like, you know, he helped me out. He answered any of my questions that I had and, you know, advised me on who I could potentially interview next. So it, it was really great. It was a really great experience. And finally, who's next? So next week, I'll be releasing my interview with Tom Scudamore. And then for those guys out there that haven't subscribed already, if they could subscribe, then they can see what's going to come after that. Happy days. Thanks a million for your time, Hannah. No worries. Thank you. Have a good day. You too. Hi, Johnny. This week's betting people is with top Australian bookmaker Robbie Waterhouse. Married to the champion trainer Gay, started making a book in, when he was aged 18, was warned off in 1984. Then he went professional punting, tucking up his fellow bookies. He was laid back on course in 2001, where he's been ever since. Um, he, he talks about how to win as a bookie, how to beat the bookies, and what takes a good punter, what makes a bad punter. It's fascinating viewing, and here's the trailer the most fearsome punter in Australia, uh, who's still alive, so I won't mention his name. Uh, he was very hard to beat. I had nothing but respect for him. But, of course, twice a year, all of a sudden, he'd run hot, to use the expression, and start to chase his losses. Uh, and I used to always join in. I remember complaining about the fact that only, the only time I really wanted to bet him was when he was chasing. 
Thanks a million for listening to week two. Don't forget to download the app and you can find us on starsportsbet.co.uk or on the old telephone on 08000 521 321. Thank you.